Here we go. Okay, perfect. We are live on Facebook. We are recording so that we can save this for YouTube for the people who have to miss it because they are probably at work. And that's what we are talking about today and for the next seven weeks. So I'm Shannon Gregg, and I am joined today by my gorgeous friend, Elizabeth Rodriguez Dennehy. Hello, Elizabeth. Hello, Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> We're having some gorgeous weather today, and Elizabeth is so happy she moved to Pittsburgh from Puerto Rico. <laughs> Well, that's a very interesting joke. I'm not going to make any more comments about that. But yes, the only thing we have in common is the first letter P for Puerto Rico and P for Pittsburgh. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so Elizabeth is a specialist in gender integration. She literally wrote the book. When you see her face on the screen, if you look to the side of the screen, screen you'll see a cover of her book called Can You Afford to Ignore Me? which I found when I was the only sales manager who was a woman in a technology company. I still am the only sales manager who is a woman. That seems to be a recurring theme through my life. And Elizabeth's book was real therapy for me. How do I deal with this? How do I deal with it academically? How do I deal with it emotionally? And when I met her, we had this instant synergy and we said, we've got to do some things together. And one of the things we kept talking about was mommy guilt. We kept coming back to what it felt like to be a working mother. And so we designed this series for you. And Elizabeth, you've been such a huge help for me and I can't wait to hear the things that you have to say today and over the next seven weeks. Well, this is gonna be a, a joint effort. Thanks for having us again. I, um, I, I highly uh, recommend that you try to keep track of this particular series and, and I'll tell you why. When Shannon and I started to talk about working together, one of the big issues that she relayed to me was being a mom and loving her profession. And she said, how did you do it? And back in my life and my time, it was really, a, a, we were starting to be pioneers in this whole thing about working out of the home and, and enjoying our profession and having our children and enjoying our family. Here's what happened the other day when we were closing one, one of our events, we looked at each other and we said, you know, Lately, this issue about parenting is just continuing to surface and it's happening in my work and it's happening for Shannon. So here we are. We want to do a couple of things for you. We want to raise this conversation to the place it deserves, which is we have to be aware of, of what is involved in this world of parenting and work. Number two, we want to give you the what's going on. We're going to break the topics. And we're going to give you updates of what's happening, issues around perceptions, strategies around, you know, how you maneuver. And number three, most importantly, how you take control of the process, regardless of whether you are a single person who decided to not have children or married person who does not want to have children to a mother or a father of three, four kids. This applies for all of you. And so that's what we want to um, sort of bring you and make you aware. This conversation is really important. And here we are offering this because we feel it's the right thing to do. Um, and I have to turn it back to Shannon and ask her, Shannon, let's start with a bit of how is it that you've been able to manage? She has a beautiful, brilliant girl. Um, I enjoy being with her and um, she's so smart and she's really pretty. But anyway, um, Shannon, how do you, how did you start to try to figure out being a mom, because you wanted to be a mom, and loving your profession? That is such a good question. And I think it's probably the same question that a lot of people who have joined us today are thinking through themselves, which is, how do I and, and I read this, when I read this, this, this absolutely connected for me. How do I work as if I don't have a child? And how do I parent as if I don't have a job? Because as women, we really want to be fulfilled and say, you know, I'm the best parent I can be, and I'm also the best employee I can be. And I think that's, that's where we're trying to walk this tension rope. And, and for me, part of the thing was just saying, you know what? I'm going to try to take this guilt, and I'm going to try to erase it, which means 
do I bake cupcakes? Never. I have n I've <laughs> never baked something to send to school. And um, a lot of us, you know, we put ourselves into this, what I call mom petition, which is who can be the best mom, who can look like they have it all together the most. And we're doing that to ourselves. I mean, I've never had a mom friend say to me, you know, Shannon, it's pretty rotten that you didn't send in some homemade stuff or make the best Halloween basket, you know, groups. And, and I think that when we put that pressure on ourselves, we have to realize that's our own self-talk. So we need to curb that from ourselves because if I keep telling myself, you know, in order to be the best mom, I have to make these Easter baskets and they have to be fully decorated, but I also have to go to work and come up with the best um, analyzation of how my sales team is doing, how I can possibly make more connects and find more revenue for the company. I mean, those are two me's that are very loud inside of my head. They compete, but, but I, I've heard a couple of examples you've used. For instance, for you, um, some of the things that are traditionally assigned to women, let's say shopping for groceries or cooking is shared with your husband. And uh, which is something I've done in my life as well. So a couple of those examples, I think it would be really um, telling to get this conversation framed. Sure. So uh, I used to work with this lady named Holly who said she assigned her husband all of the G's. So he did the gas, he did the groceries, you know, he cut the grass. And when she said that, that, that really told me, hmm, there's something to be said about being very open about communication and delegation. And so within my own house, I don't grocery shop or cook at all. Luke does all of that, but that also means I have to do all the cleaning up. So we had a very um, sort of business-like conversation to say, what's your area of responsibility? What's go. my area of responsibility? And how do we run this household like a business? Because it's sort That's, of- You know what? That's exactly, um, and I, I'm almost interrupting you, but that's, I get excited with, when I hear those things. Yeah, it's absolutely true. It's, it's that, it's, a, it's almost running a business called marriage and family. And we'll talk more about how we define parenting soon. Um, Shannon mentioned something that's really important that is, <coughs> I'm sorry, <coughs> air. <laughs> and, <coughs> and when we think of mommy guilt, we have to think about where that comes from. And it comes from a poor social definition of moms having to be perfect. And, <laughs> sorry. <clears throat> so having to be perfect is impossible. It's not gonna work. It's unattainable. And let me share some data that we have, both women who stay at home and women who work outside of the house feel mommy guilt. So when I, I read that and I saw that, I said, okay, this has to be elevated to the place where we have to have a discussion. Because even the one who stays home, she feels she's not giving enough time to her kids. And so why is that, right? Why is it that Shannon is immediately surfacing this whole concept of mommy guilt. Where is it that it's coming from and how pervasive is it? And it's very pervasive. There are many things that happen as a consequence, and I'm gonna make sure I get the list here right, um, of us feeling guilty. And I wanted to have it written so I did not forget to cover each one of them. Here's the issue. When we get into mommy guilt, the quality of our life, because we're not happy, we are like bipolar, we're split, is affected, right? Here, there, Shannon said, I have two worlds that she very intuitively and beautifully reconciled, right? Number two, do I see a future? Do I see a future as a professional? Do I see a future as a mother? And I remind you, your future as a mother will end because they grow up and then they go off. No. <laughs> yes, they do. No. <laughs> yes, they do. And that's part of this whole experience is to be self selfless. You have to let them go. Um, dreaming big 
and thinking of possibilities, we sort of stop desiring for more as a consequence of thinking, well, maybe I shouldn't because I might be needed. And then the other issue that's happening a lot is women are not allowing themselves to, at work, consider themselves material for leadership because they're saying, I don't want to get involved in that track because it might require too much for me. Now, let me turn it to Shannon and ask her, does any of this resonate with you? In a really large way, you know, I think, I think there are implications and we're going to talk about this today and over the next seven weeks about, you know, women in the workplace who either subconsciously say to themselves, I can't take on additional responsibilities because I'm a mother and I need to be thoughtful about that or supervisors or superiors who think she can't take that on because she's a mother, whether it's, whether they're cognizant of the way they're saying it or not. A lot of times people aren't thinking about women for leadership roles or additional roles because we have that sort of split duality. And, you know, when I went back to work after I had Halligan, nobody said to me, how's your husband doing? You know, everybody said, oh, how are you doing? How hard is this for you? And every day I'd come home and say to him, hey, how many of your electrician buddies asked you how it was to be a first time dad? So there's, there's still this sort of stigma. I mean, we're only a few generations into women working. And I think a lot of what we're dealing with is just this sort of internal dialogue and this dialogue that's happening around us. And, and you know, I want to emphasize to all our viewers, this is happening everywhere. I've been in Europe in, let me share a couple of examples in Germany. Uh, women who go up work outside of the house are called raven mothers. And when I heard that the first time, it hit a raven, you know, it's the it's a black, but, but it's just a horrible bird. Um, and in Prague, women, as I was talking to them, um, would always sort of immediately say to me, and now I have to go out and cook dinner and take care of the kids. And these were professional women with very, very, very powerful jobs. And so as I'm walking away, Brazil, uh, even women who have support in the home. I remember talking to this woman from um, one of their biggest companies in Brazil, a power company. And she said, I have a person that helps me with the caretaking of the home and with the cooking, and yet I can't find enough hours in the day to fulfill what I feel is my obligation with my little girl, taking her to ballet, to soccer, and I feel this anxiety all the time. And so it's, it's almost like we'll, <laughs> we don't win. And so part of what we need to make sure of is that we understand where this comes from, and as we develop this program and go through the seven modules, I want us to start to think about one thing, and that is, and I think Shannon and I have discussed this a lot, how do we define parenting? Right? Because here's what happened. The, the context of where we're coming from is back, let's go back in the Second World War, you know, what was the image, our caretaker, you have to stay in the home. You are the, the one who kept the home together. And th that will go and earn the money. And so this thing about mom being the support and that being the breadwinner is a very strong contextual reality. And so how is it that we start to look at that reality and say to ourselves, hmm, is that applicable to me? Is that reality my reality, right? And how is it that I'm affecting my thinking right now based on history that I learned from mom? Because I learned that from my mother. Does that make sense, Shannon? I think it makes perfect sense. Um, when we're reaching back and saying, 
you know, what has history done? And it's very recent history. I mean, World War II is just not that far back. And, and we're standing on the backs of parents that have come before us and the, the roads that they've paved. And we've talked a lot about authenticity, you and I, and, and how do you remain authentic? And how can you be authentic to who you are? And, you know, I didn't tell my boss I was pregnant until I was about 18 weeks pregnant because I was afraid to say, you know what, I'm also going to be a mother now. I'm not only going to be the, you know, sales operations person. I'm also going to be a mother now. And that was in my head. That wasn't in his head. He's, he's, he was a very dear and sweet guy and said, I, I can't believe you didn't tell me this earlier, but um, so, I told myself that. This is exactly part. I, I remember um, when I was working with a friend in wall street, we had a, a, a program, Actually, we were doing consulting work to enhance a program they had around women uh, becoming partners. And in comes through the door for one of our interviews, this woman, it was summertime. Of course, it was air-conditioned environment, but she was wearing this shawl. She sat in front of us, and I'm sitting in front of her, and she's going about explaining her job and how phenomenal she is in M&As and how much money she makes for them. And then I looked at her before she kept going and said, how long do you think till it shows? And her eyes went like this. And she said, what do you mean? And I said, you're pregnant. And she looked at me like, does it show? Now, this is a lawyer. This is Wall Street. And she's walking around with a shawl. And I'm thinking, there's so, so much wrong with this picture, right? And so part of what we want to help you do is present that conversation present it in a way which is going to be from strength, from authenticity, from power, and, and with a plan. And so make sure that you're able to feel comfortable and demystify this image. The press is not helping and legislation is not here. So we have to take this on, right? We have to say to ourselves, and this is why we're doing it, how do I take control of this? Um, one of the things I mentioned in the book, and I say everywhere I go, is that company needs to be aware of something that's obvious. And that is women are not pregnant all their lives. Pregnancy happens in a fairly discreet period of time. With exceptions like mine, I had one child and then the second child was seven years later, but that's, that I didn't. Not everybody should be doing that, even though for me it was fantastic. It was great. Um, usually, there's a period. And after that, two things happen. Not only do we accomplish this feeling of doing both, of being the mom and being the professional, but if you allow for a little bit of flexibility, you're gonna get the best professional ever because it's, we will be fully empowered. All this experience is brought between our ears we've gone through that place of i've accomplished one of the most important things in my life and i will always be a mom but it's a different thing in terms of times you know the hour that i need and you've got me you've got me and so also for managers and owners of companies how are you thinking about pregnancy what do you think about that shannon today is the perfect day to talk about that um because we're having a snow day today in Pittsburgh, <laughs> even though it's spring. Uh, it's spring, by the way, for people who learn, we're in the second day of spring. But, okay. <laughs> Supposedly. <laughs> um, but, you know, before I had a child and I would have people who would say, you know, um, I'm having an issue. It's a snow day. I don't have anything else to do with my kid. I have to work from home. I'm going to have to miss this meeting. And, um, you know, my response to that is one that now that I'm a mother, I'm probably not very proud of, but I thought like, well, why don't they have a contingency plan for snow days? And then my first snow day as a mother, I thought, woo wee, I... I was wrong because it is so stressful to find somebody to help you take care of your kids so that you yourself can get to work and do the things that you need to do. And um, I think this is not, this is not only for mothers, but this is for fathers too. It's for parents, depending on how the co-parenting situation is set up. But there are so many situations where employers don't actually consider the needs of a parent and with unemployment as low as it is right now, they absolutely need to. 
And, and one thing that we are also will discuss lightly, but it's really critical, is the family. Um, the, the way that we used to work and the way that we are supposed to be working and really understanding how we work going forward is changing radically. And so one of the things companies, smart companies are doing is really understanding it's not a, a warm body behind a computer in the office. It's a really good brain, incentivized, fully engaged, wherever he or she might be, working with us, making us more competitive and more profitable. So one of the things that we need to start to also think about and understand and have a, a dialogue around us is to say, you know, what is the end result that we're seeking? It's good work, quality work, hitting the numbers, getting things done. How I get them done, where I get them done is starting to become less relevant slowly. Not true. Pittsburgh is a little bit of a more of a conservative environment, but many, many cities and many, many environments and companies are saying, you know what? As long as you get it done, I don't care. And that's wonderful for not only women, but men who want to get engaged in being parents. We want to talk about that. We're going to talk about the backlash of, to men who want to be uh, caretakers in terms of taking care of their children. Uh, be more involved in the process of um, his wife uh, maternity and being participant in going to the doctor with her. And, and what are the perceptions around that? And how is it that some men have taken on this topic and they're out there being a bit of a pioneer and a counter voice to say, hey, listen, we are entitled to be parents as well as to my wife. And so I want, I want that right, and I want that opportunity. Um, I think that for today, uh, we've sort of planted the seed. Shannon is going to go through the different topics that we are going to be covering so that you can really see um, the benefit of following this um, process with us. And we really, really want to open our arms and invite you to join us. Shannon, you have the list with you? I do have the list and um, over the next seven weeks, we've kind of divided into topics. So you either can jump in and join us on the ones that really sound interesting and applicable to you, or you can join us for the whole entire series. And um, I do see we've got some, some of my dad friends on here, like Chris, who is very enlightened. Um, and we appreciate that as well, because we're going to be addressing that. Um, a lot of times what we're dealing with, and you know, my dad's a business owner, are dads who are so enlightened when it comes to their daughters, but sometimes that subconscious bias doesn't make its way back into the workplace. So next week, and these are Wednesdays at noon Eastern time, if you're in Europe, it's four or five o'clock, depending on when their, their daylight savings time shifts, and um, 9 a.m. on the West Coast. Next week, we're going to be talking about parenting at work. So what is the perception of parents in careers? What does the academic research say about parents who work? And how can I handle those demands of being a parent and also focus on my career? And that's a burning question for so many of us, I think, who are watching our children do exactly what you said, and that's grow and move out, and, and we're still expected to work. I mean, I can't retire when Halligan's 18, although I wish I could. <laughs> um, the week, in the third week, we're gonna be talking to single professionals who are not parents, and um, we'll be addressing some of these big boulders, like is not wanting kids selfish, or is it anti-female, or is it too ambitious? And how can I navigate a world where other people get to leave early, or people are always asking me, when are you gonna have a child? So that's gonna be a really good one, even if you are a parent, for you to jump back in and remember what it felt like before you were, um, I wish I would have had this topic <laughs> when I was in my late 20s and yeah. managing people. <laughs> <laughs> um, the fourth week, which will be on April 11th, we're going to be talking to married professionals who are non-parents who are dealing with these perceptions that um, maybe you're going to be having a kid soon and so we're not going to give you the best assignments or consider you for relocation. Um, does my boss see me as an extra or a supplement and, and therefore um, one person's it pay is giving our whole entire household everything they need so I'm not being considered for raises and how can I handle additional workload but still keep a good married relationship and that one is really important. 
Um, week five, which will be on April 18th, we're gonna be talking about mothers at work. And so what, what types of things do mothers have to consider that non-mothers don't have to think about? And are mothers being stuck with parenting duties that fathers aren't, you know, thinking about the birthday presents and getting your kids to the birthday parties and, um, you know, talking about the changes that happen when you have a child or add a second or a third child and how that affects you as a working mother. The sixth week, we're going to be talking on April 25th to our expectant mothers and first-time parents who are just sort of navigating it. And this is a good one for all of you to invite your friends to who, who are just trying to get through navigating this for the first time because understanding what your life is like with a baby is nearly impossible and nobody wants to tell you the real deal because they don't want to scare you. So we're going to talk about keeping up your work and preparing to being a, uh, for a mother. And, and we've learned academic research has shown us that adding an infant adds another 33.5 hours of work to your week. And so we're going to talk a little bit about how to mitigate that. Um, the seventh week. Let me, let me interject in that category something very important. We're also going to give you the strategy to, to voice your announcement uh, of having your child, which is what Shannon would say, I waited 18 months. And so part of that is going to be about helping you understand how will you create the right approach to the announcement of your pregnancy and how is it that you're going to manage the expectations going forward. Sorry for the interruption, but I no, just to make sure that we had that plug in. It's a great point. I'm glad you talked about that because, you know, getting ready to take a week's vacation is nothing like trying to say, here's who's going to cover my job while I'm, you know, trying to bond with my infant. <laughs> Um, and then the seventh week, which takes us into May, and hopefully it's done snowing by then, is men as parents and as allies. So in 2018, we still see gender stereotypes. So what are the perceptions for men if you prioritize family over career? And how can men be a good co-parent to a working mother? And how can I be a good manager to working parents? So the, the whole gamut really there when we're talking in the men's week and Chris will be looking forward to kind of getting some of your thoughts on that and and other friends of ours who are men and then the last week is one that is very important to presidents CEOs those sort of c-suite executives which is what are the economic consequences one to your company two to us as working parents so um, if you want to have a family what are the economic consequences for you at work um, are you still gonna get invited to the next project or job? Can you go to a new city? What if you're not in a family-friendly work environment? And man, Elizabeth, you've got so many cool things ready to share with everybody over the next seven weeks, and I personally can't wait to learn them too. And, and we're looking forward to doing that. Um, and I really, again, uh, ask you a couple of things. One, if you have any questions and you are not able to post them now, send us an email. Two, Spread the word. Uh, we again feel this is a very important discussion and we would like to give you the opportunity to get the information that we feel and I know will, will change this paradigm, at least for you. And if it does for you, it's going to ripple out into the rest of your environment and hopefully it starts to get momentum. Um, and with that, I'm, I'm going to say thank you for being with us. Um, I really hope weather changes soon. <laughs> we are much more um, excited about being here in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is sometimes takes a toll on us, um, the long-term uh, resident. And now more on a serious note, um, take, take on this information and make it work for you. And thank you, thank you again for being here with us. Perfect. So um, Elizabeth has a Facebook page, Rodriguez and Associates. Um, you can reach out to me if you want her information, reach out to her if you want my information. Um, really one of the things that I love the most about this lady is she could be charging <laughs> hundreds of dollars to talk to us, but she really feels like it's important for her to sort of share the things that she's picked up and learned with all of the clients that she works with. So the next seven weeks are free. We're never going to be pitching or selling anything to you. Um, so if you have particular questions you want us to answer, 
send them to me ahead of time or send them to Elizabeth and we'll make sure that we talk about and cover them. She is totally consumed with how to make sure that working parents are are feeling like they can contribute the most in both of those areas. So, so you can almost feel like you work like you don't have a kid and you parent like you don't have a job and you can kind of erase some of that mommy guilt that's living in your brain. Well, with that, we sign off. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.